A year after I was confirmed, the uh, church came out with this book called The Catechism of the Catholic Church. A year late, but when I read it, I thought, oh, this is so good because in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, under the category of the Sacrament of Confirmation, it says, what are the five effects of confirmation? Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So here's all the five effects of confirmation. So number one, it says, it roots us more deeply in divine filiation, which makes us cry out, Abba, Father. So big words, divine filiation. Basically, when you're baptized, you're made into a true son or daughter of God. You're adopted by God the Father. So what confirmation does, it roots you even more deeply in your sonship or daughterhood, right? You unite you, you unite you even more deeply to God as your adoptive father. You can cry out to God saying, Abba, Father. Remember what St. Paul said. It says, only by the Holy Spirit can you cry out, Abba, Father. Number two, it says, it unites us more firmly to Christ. So if you have a relationship with Jesus, awesome. Confirmation unites you even more firmly to Christ. So not only deepen your relationship with God the Father, united more firmly to Christ. Number three, increases the gift of the Holy Spirit within us. So I prayed for wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, piety, fear of the Lord, etc. At baptism, you're given those gifts. In confirmation, it increases those gifts. Let's re recap. Number one, united more deeply in to God's fatherhood. Number two, united more closely with Jesus Christ. Number three, increased gifts of the Holy Spirit. Number four, it renders our bond with the church more perfect. I remember hearing, hearing as a kid, people would say, well, you're confirmed, you know, you're now an adult in the church. Well, no, not really. It's not like you now buy church cigarettes or like church lotto tabs. You know what I'm saying? Just a joke. But what it means is that's the final sacrament of initiation. Like there's no more initiation that you can go through. Um, so your bond with the church, your initiated being initiated into the church, that's complete. At this point, the Pope is not more Catholic than you. That kind of a, a sense to say. So again, recap, now more deeply united to God the Father, more closely united to God the Son, more increased gifts of the Holy Spirit, completely united, right? Fully united to the church more perfectly. The first effects of confirmation, they're awesome. They're great. The first four. The fifth effect of confirmation, when I heard it, I thought, Oh my gosh, yes, that's what I wanted. And that's what I want. Here's the fifth effect of confirmation. Blows my mind. It says this. It says, confirmation gives us a special strength in the Holy Spirit to spread and defend the faith by word and deed, to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ boldly, and to never be ashamed of the cross. When I read that, I thought, oh my gosh, that's what I want. Here it is again. Confirmation gives us a special strength of the Holy Spirit to spread and defend the faith by word and action as true witnesses of Christ. I forgot that line at first. To spread, spread the faith by word and action as true witnesses of Christ. Remember what Jesus says to the apostles in Acts chapter 1. They say, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? And he says, no, 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 listen, wait. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then you will be my witnesses here in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. That promised Holy Spirit that showed up at Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, is given to every person who's open to the sacrament of confirmation. Like every person who's open to this sacrament receives this special strength of the Holy Spirit to spread and defend the faith by word and action, by what you say and how you live as true witnesses of Christ, that you'll be my witnesses. That's what he said. But you receive that special strength. Now, in, in Acts chapter 1, Jesus says that special strength is power. And that word for power is the word dynamis, right, in Greek, which is dynamite. So here's the church saying, you'll receive a special dynamite of the Holy Spirit. Not to do whatever you want, not to like get out there and live life, but to spread and defend the faith by word and action as true witnesses of Jesus Christ. So good. Number two, to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ boldly. Listen, if when you were confirmed, whether you were confirmed as an infant whether confirmed at high school, later on, beyond that whole thing, you were given the special strength to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ boldly. The apostles, when they were confirmed, right, when they received the Spirit of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, that's exactly what they did. Peter, they all went out, and Peter gave this incredible sermon where thousands of people were convicted. They're cut to the heart by the Holy Spirit through Peter's words. Why? Because he proclaimed the name of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen from the dead boldly. Jesus has given you that power as well. And if you're not yet confirmed, he wants to give you that power so you can proclaim his name boldly. And the third thing is to never be ashamed of the cross. Imagine never being ashamed of the cross. This, in the smallest way, you're out, you're, out to, you're out to eat. What happens? Well, it's time to pray before the meal. I don't, I don't really want to. Maybe you're at your high school 
it's time to pray. He's, he's, you're eating lunch. Okay, do I make the sign of the cross or, or do I just kind of scratch my nose or do I not even do anything? Obviously, that's a small, that's a, that's a small example. But even then, I have to ask, am I ashamed of the cross? On a larger scale, what is the cross that Jesus has entrusted to you? What share in Christ's cross has he entrusted to you that maybe you're ashamed of? But, to be able to, but never be ashamed of that. Even further, even more clo- uh, clearly, Jesus' cross. Sometimes, even as Christians, maybe we experience a, a, a hesitation and embarrassment of the fact that when our God became man, when the God became man, He humbled himself and became obedient even to death, death on a cross. Am I proud of him? Or am I ashamed of him and his cross? Do I look to that that image of Jesus on the cross and say, that is the love of God for me. And that's the love of God for you. Or do I hesitate? See, I, I love, I love this, this. These are the effects of confirmation. This is what's supposed to happen in every one of our lives. This is the gift that was given to you. And here's the question. Has, have, has that gift become manifest, right? Has that gift revealed itself? Has that gift been lived out? If not yet, you've been confirmed already? Simply pray, God, please, do all those things. Unite me, me more firmly to you. You as God, my father, and my adoptive father, unite me more closely to Jesus Christ, your son. Give me that increase of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Render this bond of my tr- me with me in the church more perfect. And also give me that special strength to spread and defend the faith by word and deed as true witnesses of Jesus Christ, to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ boldly and to never be ashamed of the cross. You guys, this is the gift God has for you. Just simply ask for it. Jesus promised. The Father would give the Holy Spirit to anyone who asks. So what are you waiting for? Ask and receive. For all us here to sense presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. What superpower would you have? I literally can't choose one. Like, well, flight, but let me clarify. I don't just want to hover. I want to be able to fly fast. But if you're going to fly with the speed of light, then you also need to be invulnerable. But also go without oxygen. You can go into a space. You'd be able to be impervious to heat or cold. You also need to have telescopic vision because if you're going to the speed of light, also, you know, you want to be super strong because you don't want to show up to like, you know, the burning building and not be able to help at all. Basically, Superman.